What's up, Algebra 1B? So I'm not there. It's systems of linear inequalities for the second day, for the third day, I guess, trying to get you to do these well. Um, I should mention that, number one, um, don't fall asleep during the video. It's not very long. It'll have some good tips in it. I'll try to make it short. And number two, when you get to the assignment style, you can work in groups of two. However, I will have someone take a note to see where what groups are working together, just a mental note most likely. And if I find out it's groups of people who I've told they're not allowed to work together, that will be a problem. Also, if you fall asleep, I'm hopeful there'll be a note in the packet that has uh, your name and the fact that you fell asleep so that I can write you up because it's really getting ridiculously old. I'm trying to help you get to the point that you're trying to want to get to as well, which is not have to take math anymore. This is your chance to do it. So um, the reality is we are in the eighth week of school, so we have this week and next week until fall break, and then it's just like seven weeks until the end of course test, so we're almost at a break anyway, so just put in a little bit of effort, and that would be great. Um, anyway, so this is systems of linear inequalities. Let's get to them as quickly as possible. So number one, I'm going to scout the problem. Kyle has been doing this very well. He looks for lines underneath, and he sees that this would be two solid lines. Only one has two solid lines. So the answer to number one is C. See? It's the only possible answer. You didn't have to graph anything. Number two, um, it has that x is greater than negative three. Now there are uh, what I should know is I can't graph that into a calculator. What I should also know is how to graph x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So if I have a, a coordinate plane, if it's x, I'm going to go on the x-axis down to negative 3 and make a dot. I'm going to make a line that's straight up and down. It's a solid line because it's got a uh, line underneath It's equal to, and it says x is greater than, so I'm going to shade up. What I'm going to do is look for questions that have that component. Um, C doesn't have a straight line, or solid line. It has dotted, so that's out. A uh, doesn't have that at all, so that's out. So it's either B or D. Now, I have to use my calculator now to get an idea of where it's going to go, unless you want to hand graph it, which is totally fine, by the way. Uh, most of you don't tend to want to do that, so I'll bring this thing up. Now, the reality is, I went ahead and typed this in. If I can get the thing to do it, that would be awesome. Um, I went ahead and typed this thing in, the y, equal, y is greater than 2 thirds x thing. I just typed it in, blah, 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 plus 1, made it greater than, that whole thing. You know, you've been doing it. And then you just graph it. From here, what I need to do is think, well, I have that x is greater than negative 3 thing. So mentally, you should be drawing a line in this general area and then making a bit of shade. Well, the part where they overlap is right here, which reads like B to me. So that's the answer to that one. It's not D because it's shading above. You may be able to even figure it out just thinking logically about how they're shaded, but as you can see, it's B. For the next one, we don't have it in slope-intercept form. You cannot graph these directly in the calculator because Y is not by itself. And the other two, Y is already by itself, so I don't need to do anything. And these I need to do a little finagling of the numbers just to get them into slope-intercept form. In this one, by the way, when I get to this, I suggest ahead of time you look to see if the graphs match. Um, this is one dotted line and one solid line. That one meets, this one doesn't, uh, this one meets, and this one meets. So it could be any of those. I also want to know whether I'm going to flip the inequality or not, and I can tell ahead of time if it's in standard form because x and y are on the same side. This is negative which means I'm going to divide by negative, which means I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to put a little F there or a star or something. Anything to remind me that one's going to flip. So draw my line on this one. Minus 5x because I need to get y by itself. Pretty simple stuff. Divide by 2. You've done these a million times. Y, I don't need to flip this one. Negative 5 over 2x plus 3. For the other one, x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 6. By the way, it'll never change from having no line to having a line under it. That doesn't happen. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, bring these down once you combine. You can't combine these two. Divide by negative 2. If you forget, there's one there. There is. Now, this is a negative, so I need to flip this over so it becomes less than equal to. Uh, one divided, negative 1 divided by negative 2 is 1 half. And 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. So that's a key component to this. Now I'm just going to go into my calculator, and I'm going to graph them both. I'm going to graph the new things that I've made, not the old things. 
I'll put it over here where I can actually use it. Go into y equals, clear it all out. I'm going to erase this x thing that's in the way. So I'm going to type in negative 5 over 2 x plus 3. And I'm going to, oops, don't do what I did. Make sure if you have, uh, you shouldn't have this problem with your calculator that you're using right now. But when we get to these, make sure you don't forget to click out from under the um, fraction. You know how annoying that is. And then click down, and I'm going to type in uh, 1 over 2 or 1 half. minus 6. Well, it helps if the minus would work. Minus 6. Now, the second one is a less than statement now. And it said uh, greater than up here, but I noted that I should flip it, so that's a pretty good reminder. The more that you write out, the easier these problems become. And this one was already less than, so it's just going to stay that way. Uh, before I click graph, something I should note is that this one is going to be the dotted line. So I may want to, ahead of time, uh, put my finger on the line that comes out first because occasionally, not always, but sometimes, um, you'll get situations in which the answers are exactly the same except the order of the lines that pop out. So it's helpful to know. So I'm going to hit graph and I'm going to put my finger, or my pointer in this case, there. So I know that's the dotted line. So what I'm looking for is a dotted line that goes down cross shading to be like right in this general vicinity of the answer uh, and have that mix there. So it's looking, to me anyway, like it's probably going to be B. I've got the mixed part that I need. That's all there. That looks pretty good. So my answer is B. That, you know, all the stuff that I needed to be there was there for that one. And for this one, same type of thing. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm just going to scout this one. I'm not even going to do the whole thing. This is negative, so I'm going to have to flip it. I should note that there are two dotted lines. So the only one that has two dotted lines is this one. So in many cases, you can get out of the work by just scouting the problem ahead of time, making your life easier and mine as well, because then I don't have to feel like you don't get it. So that's it. Um, shouldn't be a huge deal. And